Hello everyone, welcome in today. Today we're going to be doing another mock draft. So if you hear any noise in the background, I want to apologize. I have a newborn and, you know, I do my best to keep that out of the video. But just in case you hear it, I do apologize. But let's get straight into this. At number one overall, the Chicago Bears are going to take Caleb Williams. There's nothing to discuss there. It's the only way I can see it happening. So that's what we're going to go with. Next up, the Washington Commanders are on the clock. Personally, I go Drake May, but in this scenario, I'm going to say they go Jaden Daniels and see if that changes anything. Well, at pick three, it really doesn't. It just makes New England take Drake May. I feel like quarterbacks have to go one, two, three. I feel like the Patriots can't trade down and pass on a quarterback. I am a Bucks fan and a Patriots fan. I grew up a Patriots fan in the Northeast, so I just I can't see them passing on a quarterback. They have to have one. As a fan of the team, I just don't see how you can do it. You can't pretend that you don't need them. You know, it's just, unfortunately... They have to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Personally, I'd prefer Drake May, but in this scenario, it works out for us. The commanders go with Daniels. We're going to go with May at pick four. Now the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. And here is where we're going to get a little bit different. I think the Cardinals are going to go ahead and trade back. And we're going to have Minnesota come up and take their pick. Now the compensation doesn't really matter. I just think that the tax for a quarterback is going to require a future one and maybe even some lower picks as well but in order to make it work here that's what we had to do so now minnesota's on the clock and for them quarterback just makes too much sense they're going to go jj mccarthy so now at pick five the la chargers are on the clock and i think in a perfect world they would like to trade back but they can't always do that so marvin harrison jr is going to come off the board when you have a talent like that there's no way you can pass giants on the clock with malik neighbors makes too much sense however I'm going to go ahead and say in this scenario, they like, yeah, no, nah, I can't. Yeah, I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors. I, I can't change my mind to have to go with that. I think the top picks are pretty basic, honestly. It's not too fun until you get down into it a little bit. At pick seven, Tennessee's on the clock. And with them, I'm going to stick with consensus and go Joe Alt here at number seven. At pick eight, Atlanta's on the clock. And I think here they're going to want to trade back. So in this scenario, who do I think would want to come up? Well, looking at the board... And who's available? There's a lot of tackles. And Roma Dunze. That's the big one right there. So we're going to trade Atlanta's pick to Arizona. Arizona's going to give up that. And we'll say that. I don't think that's quite enough. They'll probably have to give up maybe slightly more than that. But they're going to go ahead and move up to pick eight. And they're going to take Roma Dunze right ahead of the Bears, who would probably have liked to get him. So here at pick nine, the Bears are looking. And I don't think a defensive player is worth taking this early. So I think if I'm Chicago, I would want to trade back. And who might want to move up to get a player? New Orleans. I think they need a tackle. So I would, I'm going to have a trade here where the Bears trade pick nine to the Saints. And don't worry about compensation. I'm not 100% sure. So in this scenario, though, it's going to be New Orleans coming up to take a tackle. And they're going to go ahead and take Troy Fatanu. This might be a little earlier than a lot of people would have him go. Even a little earlier than I would probably like to have him go. But I think you have to explore different scenarios. And he has guard tackle flexibility. He's been going through the process really well. His length was better than anticipated. And a lot of people with Olu Fashinu, even though I have him as the better tackle prospect, they're a little lower on him because they think he's going to end up being one-dimensional. Those tiny, you know, real tiny hands are going to play a factor and how well people think he can be a run blocker. So in this situation, New Orleans is going to go with Fatanu. So at pick 10, the Jets are on the board here. And the Jets really could use tackle help. Still, in my opinion, you can't find a tackle in the second round. And unfortunately, you know, they're going to need one. Because I just don't see Tyron Smith making it through an entire season. You have two 33-year-old tackles. You need a tackle. Everybody seems to think that this could be a Jets like taking Brock Bowers or another defensive player. For me, it has to be tackle. And for me, we're going to surprise on this one a little bit. And I'm going to move a guy up that I'm not nearly this high on, but I could see the NFL loving him. And it's a Marius Mims. He's going to go at number 10 to the Jets. Way earlier than I would take him, but we're exploring a different scenario today. This is Mock Draft 5.0. So, you know, you got to switch it up a little bit and do something crazy and see how it changes. There's going to be reaches. There's going to be drops, all that. So now back on the clock at pick 11 is Atlanta, and they still have their choice of the top defensive players. So if I'm Atlanta, personally, I like Jared Verse better than Dallas Turner. I know I'm in the minority. Turner has more upside. I just, I just don't think 
that he has utilized all of his athletic ability. And I know that means he could improve and get better. But to me, that's the problem. He hasn't been able to utilize that at Alabama. Alabama is such a good school. And Nick Saban's done such a great job of teaching his players that a lot of times they come into the league a little maxed out. And I'm worried that since he didn't maximize his potential in college, how's he going to get much better in the NFL? But in this situation, Atlanta's going to go with my guy, and that's Jared Verse here at pick 11. So at pick 12, Denver's on the clock. Well, Denver needs a quarterback. They don't have a second-round pick, so I think they're going to go ahead and trade back if they can. And I think a perfect team for them to trade back with is a team like Philadelphia. So after getting that trade to go through, the Eagles are on the clock. And why would the Eagles trade up? Because I think a guy like Quinion Mitchell is exactly who they would love. They probably don't do this, but I'm going to go ahead and say the Eagles get aggressive and try to capture a little bit of momentum because last year things didn't go well for them. And I feel like they're in range to be able to move up and get a blue chip player. So a team like Philly that's kind of sort of all in with an older core should do a move like this. So at pick 13, that leaves the Vegas Raiders on the clock. And I think Vegas, instead of trading, you know, they need a quarterback. But once again, I don't think a quarterback's going to go at this spot. So if I'm Vegas... I'm looking at the board and I'm going, well, what makes me better? Olu Fashanu's here. I take Olu Fashanu. Just makes the most sense to me. I have to say that I think he's tackle two, almost tackle one for me. And I think the process has been a little hard on him. And it happens to players every year. I think that same thing's happening with Drake May right now. So personal opinion, but Fashanu falls to 13. So at 14, Chicago's on the clock. Now the Bears again, are in excellent field position when it comes to what's available. I think they just stick and pick here, and they go Dallas Turner at pick 14. That's an excellent pick. They get one of the top defensive players, and he comes off the clock here and pick 14 to the Bears. Next up's the Indianapolis Colts at number 15. A lot of people love the pair Brock Bowers. I've got to be honest with you, I don't see it. I'm going to go ahead and give them Brian Thomas Jr. I think... He's a little bit more of who Chris Ballard likes with the athletic toolsy freak. So to me, it just makes the most sense that that's the type of guy the Colts would target. Now it picks 16 Seattle's on the clock. Now, I think Seattle actually could use some interior D-line help and edge help. So to me, I like Leatu Latu here. It's a little early with the medical questions, but we're going to have him come off the board and see, you know, if... This changes anything because a lot of times I have him fall to late first round just because of the injuries, but we're going to push him up the board and see how it affects the rest of the draft in this one. Like I said, we're trying to be a little bit different here. So at pick 17, Jacksonville's on the clock. And I think with some of the tackles available, they're going to be interested in trading down. And I'm going to have a team come up for a tackle. So we're going to go ahead and have the Dolphins come up on the clock here at number 17, and they're going to rush up to the podium and send in Talise Fuanga to come off the board at pick 17. And I know it sounds like I'm tang- saying that last name wrong. It's not. It's If you look, you can find an NFL Network clip of him, and it's Fuanga. It doesn't look like it, but that's how it works with some of these Islander names. So at pick 18, Cincinnati's on the clock. Now, this is where I always tend to put Brock Bowers, and I think in this situation, I'm going to go different and say Byron Murphy comes off the board here, and they improve the interior of their D-line for the long term. So now at pick 19, the L.A. Rams are on the clock, and this is where Johnny Newton's going to come off the board. Mr. Jerzon, Newton to the Rams. Aaron Donald retiring. There we go. Perfect fit. Now at pick 20, Pittsburgh's on the board, and I think they could still use a tackle. And I believe J.C. Latham can come in, play right tackle, and they can move Broderick Jones over to the left side, and then they'll hopefully have their tackle position set for the next 10 years. We'll see if that works out for him, but that's where I have this one going. Now on the board at pick 17, again, is Jacksonville. And honestly, they're in a situation where they could fall back if another team wanted to come up for a quarterback, but I don't think that's going to happen here. I think Jacksonville is going to go ahead, stick and pick with Terry and Arnold on the board and run that one in at pick 21. Now at pick 22, Denver's up on the board, and this is where quarterback goes, and I'm going to connect them to Michael Penix Jr., I think he is the better prospect. I could be wrong, but I think he has a better arm. I think his NFL potential is much higher than what Bo Nix's ever could be. Bo Nix could have a Mac Jones-type career. 
where he might have a good year or two, but overall, he just doesn't have that ceiling. He might be okay, but he's going to have low. So to me, you don't take that guy in the first round. I am not dinging on Mac Jones. He seems like a great guy and all. But I didn't like the pick when the Patriots did it, and I don't think it'd be smart for any team to do it in round one. But it could happen. Next up at pick 23 is the Arizona Cardinals. And I think the Cardinals, after taking Roma Dunze and looking at what's on the board here, they're going to go ahead and go interior of their O-line, and I think a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson could make some sense for them. It would help improve their interior, and he's a guy with pretty high potential, Now, he does have some injury stuff that people have rumored to be out there, so we'll have to see if that takes him down the board. But until I get more confirmation on that through the media and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and stick him here at pick 23. At pick 24, Dallas is up on the clock. Dallas needs a tackle. They're going to take Tyler Guyton. I think that's the best tackle available. Run the pick in. They're done. Next up's Green Bay. Now, they need a tackle. The problem is... I don't necessarily love the tackle picks here. So let's go to the interior of the O-line. You have a guy like Graham Barton who could potentially, who could potentially, he kind of fits what Green Bay does. They like tackles with guard and everything flexibility. But for me, I just don't think that's where they're going to go here. They're going to look at the board, see who's available, and they're going to go ahead and trade back. I know that sounds crazy, but... I think with Brock Bauer still on the board at pick 25, somebody's going to come up to get this kid. And that is going to be Kansas City coming up to take Brock Bowers. So that way he can learn underneath Travis Kelsey and play for a creative offensive mind like Andy Reid. And that gives the Chiefs another passing option, basically. And I think Bowers is amazing. And I think at pick 25, it's too much value. But in this scenario, he's going to drop because he's a tight end and you just don't know... I have a hard time with tight ends in the first round. I don't think there's a whole ton of value there. And it's really been spotty if you look back at history. And I know you can't always look at history because history isn't always correct when it comes to these things. But I don't know. I'm I'm a Gator fan, but I thought Kyle Pitts would go to Atlanta and dominate. And he looked really good as a rookie, and then he just kind of tailed off. So I don't know. It makes me think that teams are going to drop Bowers down the board, especially because he doesn't have that elite size and speed. And without him testing, there's still some questions there. He was amazing in college, and I've seen some amazing college players just not be good NFL players. And it does shoot up red flags when a guy doesn't do the testing. So, I don't know. I have some questions about that one. Here at pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the board. And I've consistently been going to the edge class for the Bucs. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if that's where they end up going. Or maybe at CB with like Cooper DeGene or Nate Wiggins here on the board. But I think looking at who's available, I'm going to go a little bit different here. And I'm going to go to the receiver class. And I'm going to go ahead and put A.D. Mitchell with the Bucks. I'm not sure if that's a move the Bucks would actually want to make. Because, you know, there's some questions there. You know... What happened at Georgia where he couldn't get production? He went to Texas. He disappeared at times. He has all the potential in the world, and he looks dominant. But then sometimes he's just not doing anything on film, and you don't understand what's going on there. So I have questions, but I'm going to pair them up with my bucks in this one. So at pick 27, Arizona's back on the clock. And I think Arizona's going to be okay dropping back down the board. And I think Arizona's going to go ahead and drop down to pick 30, And the Baltimore Ravens are going to come up. And this might seem a little bit crazy, but I think looking at who's available, you know, at tackle, I don't see anybody here. Interior O-line, Graham Barton maybe could play tackle for them. But I actually think they're going to come in and they're just going to go, okay, we're going to jump the bills and we're going to get one of these wide receivers and continue to grow our room. With them losing OBJ, I feel like they still need to add to the room. It's kind of underrated. I think people don't talk about it enough. But I think they're going to come up. And they're going to take a guy like Lad McConkey, who can play a lot like OBJ, in my opinion. I know it's a little crazy and lofty to say that, but Lad has a lot of speed and he's pretty crafty. And I think that's one of the things you got to give OBJ credit for. So Lad McConkey comes off at number 27, and that's now putting Buffalo in a tough spot with this pick here. Personally, I don't think Keon Coleman should go this high. And a lot of people think Xavier worthy, but I just don't know that he's first round worthy. We're going to go ahead and say Keon Coleman to Buffalo at pick 28. And 
it's not how this draft usually works out as we see players dropping down the board left and right that I always get off early, but it just makes a lot of sense to me. So now at pick 29, the Detroit Lions are on the board, and I think Cooper DeGene goes off the board to him here. They, there's no way. It'd be crazy if they decided to go ahead and not take a stud like this if he was available. I think Cooper DeGene has a chance to be a number one outside corner for a team. I know he's white, so people always say safety, and he can tackle, so he has versatility. Play him at safety. Safety is not as valuable as an outside corner. What's wrong with having an outside corner that can tackle? People need to explain that to me. I don't get it. He doesn't need to play in the box or closer to the line of scrimmage. This man can play out wide. He's proven it, and I think that's more valuable than just sticking him in the box because he's a white corner that's willing to tackle. I I don't know. I just don't. I don't get it. The kid can play outside. Honestly, if he wasn't white, they wouldn't be questioning putting him on the outside. And he might even be higher in this draft class. So at pick 30, Arizona's on the clock. This is still their third pick. And I think with the corners that are available, they're going to go ahead and just say, you know what? Let's snag one here. We're going to go Nate Wiggins at pick 30. So at pick 31, now you have the San Francisco 49ers on the clock. And I think Graham Barton's a good pick for them. I've been big on getting them interior O-line. And I could be wrong, but I think it's something they need Um, at pick 32. And he also has tackle flexibility, too. That's another underrated thing. So at pick 32, Green Bay is on the board here. And I think things fell pretty well for them. As you look at what they need, they need offensive tackle. I still don't think Jordan Morgan's a tackle necessarily. I think he's more of a guard. I wouldn't take him here. Probably not even Kingsley Suamatiia. Now I'll admit I haven't watched as much of him, and when it comes to the line, I don't really. It's probably definitely the position I feel most uncomfortable scouting. Even though I played a little bit of O line, it's just something about it's hard to figure out. You can tell the good players, but I see a lot of deficiencies in those two game. You know, both of their games. So I don't know if I'm Green Bay, I don't make this selection. So where else could they turn and look? Well, definitely not taking linebacker. Definitely not taking like Tavondre Sweat or Braden Fisk here, I don't think. I think for them, we're going to go ahead and go to a position that I wouldn't say is super weak, but I think they could use help at, and that's corner, and we're going to give them Kool-Aid McKinstry to round out this mock draft. Now, we had a little bit of fun in this one, and it's kind of crazy, all the trades we did. So, you know, it's not realistic. This is not how it's going to play out, but I figured let's have a little bit of fun with this one. So go ahead and tell me what you guys think below with all the different trades, players moving up and falling down the board. Like I said, drop comments below and let me know what you think. I'm LDJ11. I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day, and I'm out. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Hand me a drink because I think I'm going all in. Get me a shrink. Who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars. Flip the handlebars. Crashing in my car, wake up in a bar, I'll be a superstar.